No, witam Was, kochani. Trochę jestem zdenerwowana dzisiaj. O, jest już doktor. Jak ja mam go tutaj zaprosić? O, już. Mam nadzieję, że się udało. Hello! Hello! Oh my god, I'm so nervous, really. Well, I'm a little nervous too. We all are a little <laughs> nervous. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me on today. I'm so happy to, to have you here, you know, and I'm so excited and, uh, you know, uh, mostly I'm not so nervous, but I was, uh, I was, you know, calm all day and uh, I was thankful that I can speak with you. And uh, one hour ago, I was starting to, you know, just shaking and I, and I thought, oh my God, am I going to do this or, or not? But I hope that you are nervous too. So we are both. <laughs> I'm a little side. nervous and I understand you're going to be translating back and forth and I'm patient with all of this and here to answer questions and maybe ask some questions too. Okay, so I, I actually already uh, introduced you uh, to my uh, audience, so they know you, I hope, but could you please tell uh, us something about you? Uh, I would like to know you better and my community as well, because I know that you are on carnivore for 12 years and you are uh, practice uh, uh, in your uh, field, uh, also ketogenic diet, but could you, uh, could you tell us more about you? I'm a fertility doctor that mostly practices in upstate New York of USA. I've been in medicine for about 30 years. I grew up in Los Angeles, California. I'm of Italian descent. I grew up on mostly a standard Mediterranean fruit, vegetables, seeds, nuts, pasta, bread, uh, and every ethnic food that Los Angeles could provide. Chinese, uh, Italian, uh, Medi again, everything you can imagine, Polish and everything, and loved it all. And, and um, I had a lot of problems uh, as a child. I couldn't read. I had migraines. I had bowel problems. And uh, throughout the years, I, I developed arthritis, psoriasis, kidney stones, bowel pain, bowel bleeding, and more, and even depression. And about 15 plus years ago, I started in the paleo space because as a fertility doctor, I learned from many of my patients who were getting pregnant on carnivore diet. And then, uh, I'm sorry, getting pregnant on paleo diet. And then from there, I started reading about it and I learned about keto diet. And I tried both paleo and keto. And then I ran into someone doing carnivore and it was meat and no exercise. And mm -hmm. he was healthy. And I went carnivore almost 12 years ago. It's 11 plus now. And my migraines gone, arthritis, psoriasis, bowel bleeding, hemorrhoids, kidney stones, back problems. And my anxiety and depression really just like went away. And in just like a month or two, and I never felt better. My energy is amazing. And I've seen so many patients improve on keto and, and but even get better on, on mostly a carnivore diet plan. So- actually, it, was, it was actually my first uh, question. Uh, that uh, you are on carnivore for 12 years, but uh, what made you to make such a decision to, to do carnivore? Because I didn't know about your uh, problems. I mean, health problems, as you mentioned before. So for me, I, and I think for uh, all my, my audience, it's uh, really important to, talk, to know that uh, you just switch your diet because of your uh, own problems with your, with your body. Because, you know, people mostly ask me, I don't know if you have the same problems, I mean problems, maybe the same question from your patients that, you know, I have, for example, uh, Hashimoto, I have a problem with uh, 
constipation, I have depression, I have anxiety, I have kidney stones, and so on and so on, multiple sclerosis. Uh, I have Lyme disease for many, many years, you know, I didn't have, the, uh, I, I've been, uh, I, I didn't have uh, diagnosed uh, for many, many years, you know, I had arrhythmia, I had a heart operation, I couldn't walk for five years, and uh, I have a lot of uh, people who are struggling with a lot of um, issues, and they always ask the same question, how can I improve? And I think that it is really important, what did you say, that you had a lot of problems with your health, and you managed uh, with the carnivore diet. You know, it, it, absolutely. Again, it, 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 as a doctor, a scientist, food was healthy for us and lots of vegetables and fruit and grains were good for us. But I come to learn that that's not true. And fatty meat's supposedly bad for us. And I've come to learn that that's not true. And ultimately, we've been fed in incorrect science. It's really just incorrect science. And science is very, um, um, it's manipulating the data and sharing a story that it more has to do with money rather than truth in health and wellness. And my, my sister died of diabetes at 52. My best friend died of cancer at 52. And I, and I went on an exploration. They died about 15 years ago, about the same time. I was like, I got to figure this out. And, and as I dig deeper and deeper, uh, our, uh, someone asked a question about confidence. I feel more confident and, and I feel just brighter and, and just more energetic in, than ever on this nutritional, we call it a diet, but really it's our, it's our proper human nutrition. Yeah, that, that is true. And I would like to ask uh, about your uh, education because I think that uh, Mostly the, you said about uh, our knowledge about uh, research and so on, you know, and I think that the system uh, is not correct. I mean, you know, we, uh, we, are, uh, we are learning something which is not actually a true, but it's not actually a something which is going to help us, you know, and I think uh, you as a doctor, you know that the best that you are going to, to school you had uh, i i uh, i've read about dr mercola as well uh, that he he was learning for all the time the same stuff and he uh, after that he uh, wrote that uh, he can be the doctor in half a year because he's going to prescribe only medication after that <laughs> you know and not uh, not exactly help people to uh, be healthy, but to give more and more drugs. It, so, so I went to, in, in undergraduate uh, college, I studied biochemistry and nutritional biochemistry. And I was a biochemistry major. And then I went to medical school in California, UC Davis, and really the standard discussion is our, our plant-based diet is good for us and meat is bad. And the cause of disease is just, you're unlucky. Really. Or your DNA. Well, well which, and I say that meaning that's your unluckiness. It's cause your DNA is the problem. And then we can't change that. And then we have drugs that we're learning to give you to suppress your symptoms. I took migraine medication. I took stomach medication. I took backache medication. I took anxiety medication. And, and, and then I learned to drink alcohol and drink coffee. And I even smoked marijuana as a child because, well, not as a child, as a teenager, because it was everywhere, right? And, and it was a thing to do. And, and so, I never realized, and then I exercised a lot, which also I think contributes to uh, uh, damage to our body, excessive exercise. And so as a doctor, 
we're still taught that fruit, fiber, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, and white meat, lean meat, chicken and fish, no red meat, and no animal fat is really the, the healthiest thing you can do. And so we're propagating that. Again, I don't think it's our, we doctors aren't intentionally doing it because we go into medicine to help people. And then we learn all of this and the DNA is the problem and it's just unlucky or it's a pesticide that human beings sprayed on the plants that you're eating. It's not the plants making the pesticide. And so we are hopefully in the world today of communication globally, we're gonna be able to share some new ideas that are gonna be helping people heal and reduce the, yeah. the, the, the need for all the drugs. Yes, it's, it's great. I would like to ask you because um, it's, not so, it's not so easy to change uh, the diet. You know that because some people eat uh, just not, I'm not talking about fruits and vegetables, you know, but I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, sweets, uh, potatoes, a lot of junk food, actually, you know. And uh, I would like to know, because you, you've mentioned that you also did it. I mean, uh, this, this all junk food, after that, you, you thought about ketogenic diet. And uh, how did you uh, start changing your diet? Was it uh, hard to adjust uh, the different way of, of, of eating? You, you, you did this, you know, step by step or just, you know, jump into, uh, into the, the, the carnivore? Well, everyone's interested in health, they're health conscious. More people are interested in being, living a healthy lifestyle, okay? And so people go to their doctors, everyone's on a diet, whether, whatever the diet is, we're all used to diets, right? Because we're doing it because we wanna look better and feel better. So, so I was on the Atkins diet, the Weight Watchers diet, the the vegan diet, the vegetarian diet, the plant-based diets, lean meat diets, and I exercised. And, and so when I found keto, I, then I began to sort of question, well, what does keto mean? And why is keto somehow so important? Really, keto is a low, a low sugar level in your bloodstream. That's all it is. Reduce your overall glucose levels. When you reduce your glucose levels, you reduce your insulin levels, you reduce the uh, everything and you reduce inflammation because the leading cause of inflammation is sugar. And it comes from vegetables, fruit, fiber, seeds, nuts, and junk food. The problem is most health conscious people aren't eating a lot of junk food and they're still suffering from from fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, arthritis, migraines, and everything, and cancer, okay? Yeah. So, so from that, as I began, I, I began, because I'm a doctor, and my job is to help heal people, and as I became, I became fascinated by the fact that paleo, and again, Atkins diet was a weight loss diet, but it really wasn't talked about as a reduced reduce disease diet and then everyone lost weight then they went back to their usual diet but when i learned about paleo for weight loss and keto for weight loss but i really learned it for reducing all the diseases and that's the game changer so how did i do it because i'm neurotic about trying to figure things out because i'm a scientist and i've done research i published papers i read all the literature but my confusion was recognizing that most scientific literature is propagating my belief system, not the real data outcome of the scientific experiment. And, yes. and so, yes, that's true. Uh, I think that the same situation is in Poland because uh, we have a lot of confusion, you know, in the in the net that we have a carnivore diet, we have ketogenic diet, and mostly this keto ketogenic diet it's not like a, you know. Uh, paleo diet it's like always dessert and always you know a lot of uh, sugar but it's it uh, everybody said okay but it's not uh, the same sugar as you eat for example from the from the 
from from ordinary sugar it's for example xylitol, xylitol and uh, erythritol but uh, it's 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 also the sugar and it's a lot of uh, desserts and it's not this uh, diet which has to be uh, our way of eating because i think that that's the uh, the most important thing and in also in poland we have the situation where the vegan diet is really popular really well go on it all eat only raw vegetables for a month or eat only raw meat for a month see which one you feel best on and it's really simple plants are poisonous 99% of plants out in nature are poisonous to humans but 99% of animals are edible to humans and so listen what did we eat what can you can eat anything you can eat anything we probably ate anything but that's not the question the question is simple what will make you feel the very best and be the healthiest eating fatty meat i do bacon eggs butter beef I do eat some ice cream. I do use some white sugar from time to time because a little bit of sugar or even a little bit of fruit or vegetable is not bad for you from time to time. The problem is we're told that you need to have it all the time, but it's deadly all the time. That's our real problem. And so we're 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 all confused. And so I say it's simple. Simple. Okay? Number one, fat is critical to your body. And being fat is not the cause of disease. The cause of disease is plants. And that's it. Excessive plants and very little fat in your diet. And fat comes from an animal, not from a plant. And so ultimately all the all the plant oils are basically bottled by an industrial company. There's yeah. there's no natural plant oils that you can eat of any significance out there. And and so what I'm learning on this journey is everyone wants to be healthy. Everyone. Is it easy to change your diet? No, it's not. But you want to be healthy, you're willing to do something hard when you have coaches like yourself and people now communicating globally free there's so much for free out there that you don't even have to spend a dime on it and you will learn something that's a game changer try all the diets give them all a try but you will feel the very best on carnivore that's the one thing that i've learned and it's easy because like what do you need to what do you buy at the market I, it can be ground meat it could be pork it could be lamb i mean that's this is it and having five girlfriends or five boyfriends at the one time is not good for anyone i mean friends are good but you know what we're talking about right yeah. and so so our our meals should be very narrow very discerning if you want to be the really the healthiest that you can ever be Yeah, but you 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 said something really you know c connected with me myself you know because I was a vegetarian for seven years and uh, before when I was a child I didn't want to eat meat because I didn't like it you know actually I also uh, I choose a lot of um, sweets you know a lot of junk food uh, and. Uh, i knew that uh, i i didn't know that it is my the biggest problem of of myself it was that i was all the time pick the sugar up you know from from uh, food and i didn't know that it is so important what what am i eating you know what what's nourish myself and uh, when i was uh, uh, when i was a vegetarian i i thought that i'm I'm changing myself to somebody which is, you know, who is who is better and who is changing the world for for its betterness, you know. But it was not true. And you said something really, really uh, good for my audience that we shouldn't be on the diet. We should nourish uh, ourselves and also choose something which is good for us. And uh, 
uh, that we are feeling better and better. Not everybody else. We are feeling better. That's why uh, I decided to, you know, uh, one time I, I thought, okay, if I'm vegetarian and I'm dying because I was dying, you know, I couldn't walk, I couldn't uh, eat anything almost, you know. Uh, I could drink only water. I weighed 36 pounds, uh, uh, kilos, okay. not pounds, yeah. because I don't know how to, yeah, yeah. to count, okay. you know. And uh, I was, you know, I was barely living, uh, you know, it was, it was so for my, for my kids. And uh, so I, I thought, okay, Justyna, what is going to happen? I'm going to die. Okay. But maybe I will change something. I, 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 had, I had to try something else. And I started to eat meat very, very slowly because my digestion was so poor that I mm -hmm. couldn't digest meat, you know. I couldn't digest e e e anything. And uh, I always tell people, just give a try to, to this kind of uh, diet because it's a way of living. And now I have full energy and it's it's a revolution for me you know well again this has been i'm 66 i've never felt better i started this at 55 i feel like i'm 16 i have no health problems whatsoever and and again it's as a physician i write about it i share these books uh that on on amazon or on my website drguilts.com and it really is, is a game changer for all humanity to eliminate the disorders that we're all dying from. We won't need the drugs or the doctors. And, and, and uh, wow, we should, in medicine, we, we again, in medicine, my, I went into medicine to help people. And that's why I'm here. Please tell me, uh, do you uh, check your blood sugar and uh, ketone levels? Uh, I mean, maybe uh, now not, but at the beginning, did you do this? I, I started, but I, I'm, I, I don't think the measurement of ketones is important. And unless you have a, a, a history of diabetes, you probably don't need it either. But a lot of people like to follow everything. They like to do the continuous, you know, the, but I think we're missing out on too many other things in life that then we get worried. If the number's off a little bit, we're like, oh my God, what does that mean? And maybe I should go back to eating plants or sugar. And, and ultimately our, 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 our sugar levels, glycans, glucose, galactose, mannose, fucose, and other sugars, are not the energy for our bodies, they're for glycosylation. And so, but I know I don't measure, I don't weigh myself. Uh, I just, my, if my clothing still fits good, then I think I'm doing all right. And I generally feel really great. So I don't measure, but for some people measuring it for a little bit, see what it's doing. Yeah, I think that maybe uh, uh, at the beginning it could be helpful, but uh, Dr. Sean Baker also told us that uh, it's not uh, necessary to measure because it's going to stress us as well. So we, we think that we have to be, you know, on this kind of level. I think maybe when you have cancer and you have to be in the, you have to be in the nutritional ketosis, you have to check this uh, GKI uh, uh, index. Maybe yes. it is, it's, it's helpful, but mostly it can be really stressful for for us to to stick on it yeah i think you're right and if you do straight if you do straight fatty meat it must be fatty meat it cannot <laughs> be lean meat uh, if you do fatty meat and fasting you'll get better all the diseases really uh eliminate and we know that in my opinion plants cause all disease plants fruit fiber vegetables seeds and nuts cause and lean meat causes all of our diseases cancer hypertension heart disease infertility migraines i'll go down the list depression suicide all of it yeah and could you could you tell us uh, something about because i don't know if it's uh, in the united states the same situation but most people think that eggs and meat is uh, you know cholesterol 
and uh, acidification of our body, you know. And uh, uh, people also ask me about, you know, what about my kidneys? Because I, 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 you know, you shouldn't eat meat if you have a kidney stones or you have a kidney problems because it's very acidic. So could you explain as a doctor how is it uh, looks like? that uh, you eat only because i've read about your your diet so it's mostly bacon uh, beef uh, eggs butter uh, your ice cream intermittent fasting and salt so you have just a couple of products and you eat this all the time and uh, most people uh, are going to think that this is really acidic and it's not good for your health for your uh, uh, for your uh, kidney. So could you explain us how is it looks like, you know, in your opinion? Well, your cellular environment and your blood environment is a very narrow pH. Very narrow. Okay? You, you're, you're adjusting naturally. So if you eat something acidic or something basic, it goes into the mouth, into the stomach, the acids in the stomach make everything acidic to break them down. They break down the basic amino acids, simple sugars, and fatty acids, and send them to the lymphatics or the liver. And, and so ultimately, the idea that meat is acidic or something is, uh, or basic, it, it just is, is irrelevant. We've been, we've been, we've been bombarded, bombarded with all of these terms that don't matter. And so, our, our kidneys job is to reclaim some of the, the, the minerals and, and vitamins and, 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 and water, all right? And then, and then get rid of some of it also, uh, some of the uric acid, the urea, which is a breakdown from purines and amino acids and things like that. Uh, and so ultimately, your body is amazingly uh, in, in the right stage unless you're eating toxic chemicals which come from plants. We have no requirement to ever eat a plant, ever, and no requirement to ever eat a carbohydrate. And so I personally found that these are the foods that I love the most, and it's only made me feel better. My, my urine, I yeah, drink less water. I don't drink a lot because we're drinking too much water because when you, when you actually burn fat for energy, which is you only burn fat for energy. You never burn sugar for energy, which is radical. You burn fat for energy, acetyl-CoA makes ATP, water, and, and carbon dioxide. That's just really simple. And your pH is adjusted always, just yeah. very narrow range. So, you know, again, is it is it boring to eat ribeye steak for me or burgers? And I, I do a little bit of duck liver. I love duck liver. And I do a little bit of cheese. And I do a little bit of eggs also. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I've, my, my, my bowel bleeding, arthritis, psoriasis, oh God, everything went away. And I, I have a bowel movement maybe once or twice a week. There's no more bleeding. There's no more straining. And there's almost no toilet paper. You know, wh yeah, what I animals think, use toilet paper? None of them. I think that, uh, I think that the, the, the similar situation is in the United States and in Poland as well, that we have a lot of uh, information in the internet what we should do to be healthy, what we should eat, and we should eat vegan, we should eat a lot of plants, a lot of smoothies. Uh, and uh, uh, lastly, we also um, uh, have something like that we should drink a lot of coffee because it's really good for us, you know. We have the, in Poland uh, this, uh, this kind of thinking. And I think that mostly this is the reason when people, you know, uh, that just doesn't know what to do what is good for them and they are really confused and they doesn't know what to pick up from this kind of uh, information you, you know because it is a mess and okay so oh, uh, at, at the end of the way they are going to buy a mcdonald's or 
do you know french fries because it's quick and you don't have to cook anything and the diet uh it's really uh hard for them you know because they think okay if i'm going on the diet i have to do a lot of cooking and a lot of effort to do this and in my case i know that i don't have to do anything almost i just cook my uh i just fry my steak steak you know <laughs> that's it I, and i'm really full and i'm full enough for all day and I, I do some pork or something like that and i didn't feel better uh for many many years and now you know it's it's and it's simple and yeah. and food is meant it's like gasoline in a car you you put gasoline in the car so the car can do what you need it to do if you keep on putting more gas in the car that it can't do the things it needs to do so we're only meant to eat the amount of food to fuel the mission of our creativity of our lives not to eat for entertainment but because food has become entertainment McDonald's and Burger King and Chuck E Cheese I, whatever it is in, in Poland a lot of it's the same in America right we're we're all the same we're all polish italian we're everywhere in the world where we're coming from and ultimately we we love food because our brains still believe that tomorrow there's no food so when you see food you must eat it because if you don't fill up today tomorrow is going to be a famine and and so this is the amazing game changer that that's why i only have fatty meat i don't buy all the snacks and things like that that i would eat because if they're there you want to eat them yeah i would like to ask about something because everyone is different you know this is the uh this is the sentence which i i like it because it it uh, it's like a slogan you know everybody is different no we are human and uh, we digest the best meat and i can understand that some people doesn't want to eat meat i can i can understand that and i can tell okay you don't have to eat meat if you don't want to because I'm not going to oblige that you have to eat this meat but anyway we are not different <laughs> what do you say about it well we're not different we're all the same 99% of our dna is the same we have a few slight genetic predispositions that are different but outwardly our 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 cultures our looks our colors our gender and all those things are different but ultimately if you look under a microscope the cells are the same the physiology and biochemistry is the same again there are some rare genetic mutations but they're not very common and if you know as a as a doctor i open people up hearts livers that they work the same and so we we have more, some of us have more damage than others that that's part of the problem and the damage is mostly in the gi tract that then that then allows many of the toxins to go everywhere which is which is not good for us but yeah we're the same okay no matter what country you're from yeah uh could you uh tell us about the ball movement because uh, i think that uh, mostly people think that uh, we need fiber we need vegetables we need fruits to have ball movements because if we don't eat it i also have the same question all the time uh that if i don't ha if i don't eat uh, vegetables how can i go to the toilet could you explain this how it uh, how is it works well we evolved as an animal that only ate meat for probably thousands if not millions of years we might have eaten some plants but the majority of plants are toxic and will kill us so we finally figured out there are some plants we can eat uh and we found them and but then we manipulated them and then we soaked them or we we processed them a little bit you cannot eat wheat grass of any significance and be healthy we know that but basically um try not to go to the bathroom when it's time to go to the bathroom try to hold your stool inside right it's like holding your bladder right you, when you got to go you got to go 
when you eat fiber and vegetables, you're adding a lot of bulk to your colon and it ferments, fermentation via bacteria and yeast makes alcohol, aldehydes, heat, and gas, methane. It's deadly in our body, number one. Number two is why would you put steel wool into your bowels? The mucosa of the bowels is the most sensitive tissue of our bodies. The steel wool is not good. And the science is ultimately a manufactured lie to sell, to sell the byproduct of making seed oils. Seed oils and the, the husk of the seed, you had to have something to do with it. So you ground it up really, really powdery and then you fed it to people to eat and told them that it was good for them. But it's not. And, and so when I went, uh, bowel bleeding, hemorrhoids, pain, bloating, when I stopped eating fruit, vegetables, fiber, seeds and nuts, in like one month, all gone. And I, again, when I eat meat, it, it's most of the meat, is broken down quickly in the in the in the stomach. The amino acids go to the liver. The fatty acids go to the lymphatics. The fat is what your body wants, but you're not eating it. You're not eating it. Fat suppresses the microbes in the bowels. The microbiome is not good for us. It's 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 probiotics, in my opinion, are deadly. And so, ultimately, we're fueling the manufacture of alcohol in our bowels, especially children. Is alcohol good for children? No, it's not good for adults either. Brain fog, cancers everywhere. And so fiber, your bowels want to get rid of it, mm -hmm. right? Because it's so inflammatory. So you have one, two or three bowel movements a day. I have one or two bowel movements a week. Yeah, and I know. So it's it's so, so con, con, uh, it's a lot of confusion about uh, bowel movement as well i think and um, it's this really it's really hard topic i think for for most people because they th they they think that they should have it every day or two days uh, two two times a day and it's really uh, really confusing that's uh, for for example for my audience it's going to be important i think uh, what to do because uh, if you start, uh, for example, carnivore, I, I, uh, I'm not talking about ketogenic diet because I don't know how it looks like in the United States, but here we, we should add a lot of fat and uh, additional fat, uh, even oil of oil uh, or, uh, you know, some coconut oil and you are going to be, uh, or MCT oil, you know. So that's the way of the ketogenic diet, mostly because I, I, I talk about uh, uh, the whole uh, the whole story. But if you are going to carnivore, could you tell us uh, what is going to what is going to be profitable for for us uh, at the beginning? Should we add some ox bile uh, to digest uh, better, or should we uh, should we add some? Uh, uh, digestive en enzyme to because for some, some people they may need those things the ox bile and the and the the um, uh, uh, what was the other one I pulled my brain uh, quickly uh, uh, and uh, digestive enzyme oh yeah digestive no, enzymes like yes bromelian but, or additional but but fasting you, if you start fasting your bowels heal. The, glyco, the glycobiome, glyco, G-L-Y-cobiome is healed. Now your, your sugar layer is protected. The mucopolysaccharide layer protects the epithelium. So now all those microbes aren't getting in and all the lectins, oxalates, and phytates are not getting in as readily. So you're going to reduce all of that. And, and so ultimately... You don't need to add that. I mean, I basically, I eat butter. Mm. Because when you eat fat, it suppresses inflammation. Yes, but at the, at the beginning, many people 
can't digest fat because they they did uh, i had the same problem i mean you know i was a vegetarian and i couldn't eat fat and at the beginning i had a lot of problem with my liver and i didn't know uh, what to do you know so i stopped with the diet right but but your problem isn't the fat it's the inflammation and the oxalate dumping and all the other dumping of the toxins, most likely. But again, I'm using a very loose term. But in general, this is why the fasting is so important and eating the fatty meat. But you might not, again, you might start with a little leaner meat slightly, but lean meat is not good for us. So add a little butter. But butter and cream and cheese for some people is not tolerated. Okay, and so that's why I stick mostly to, again, the fatty meat. And, and we don't need to eat too much small amounts to start. But, and you might eat a few of those through the day. But to me, one meal a day is the master way. I do one feasting meal, and I might have a little snack or two. But that's it. And so... The, it, it does take a little healing, but the healing is, is, is actually helped by a spoonful of butter. Again, not a big meal, spoonful of butter to suppress the inflammation and then uh, and working on fasting, a, a one, two or three day fast. But it takes time to build these things. And the more you listen to people like yourself to, to gain the knowledge and read more about it, we get inspired. Yeah. We're inspired to start, you know, you start little steps on the way. Everyone could run a marathon, but it doesn't mean you can mar run a marathon today. And so everyone could be a, be a carnivore because we are lions. That's what we are. But we've been domesticated to be pigs, cows, and sheep. When you eat plants, you become addicted to them. And they be make us domesticated believers in the diatribe of the dictators. Yeah. So, so basically, start slow. But I do a very narrow diet. Very narrow. You might try eggs. And, and you, again, bacon and eggs or steak and eggs, uh, butter, maybe not tolerated. And some people can't tolerate chicken eggs, but they can do duck eggs. Yes, it's so true, you know, because I've always uh, said that um, it is uh, sometimes when we tried a lot, we uh, lose our faith that uh, it is going to have that it's going to be helpful for us and i've all also been on this path you know that i thought oh my god it's not going to uh, help me i did so much and i did uh, a lot and it's not going to to help me so i'm going to die anyway everybody's going to die but right. uh, i started uh, to change my diet very slowly because i couldn't digest properly anything almost anything and uh, I've also uh, wanted to be on the ketogenic diet. So I put a lot of uh, additional uh, oils, additional fat, but it wasn't a, a animal fat. It was a lot, of, uh, a lot of nuts, a lot of oils. And I had so much problems with my cell, with my liver, with my digestion system that and I've also checked the ketones level and uh, the sugar level, and my GKA uh, levels were, were was great. But you know, I felt so poor because I put a lot of fat in myself, into myself, and I was I was in ketosis actually, but I was feeling so bad. And and uh, as you mentioned about this meat, I started to eat because I'm really thin, you know. And I was afraid that I'm going to lose a lot of weight and I'm going to be like, like this. And I, and I was already, so I was scared that I lost a lot. So uh, I started to eat meat twice a day with a little bit of butter because too much, it was, it was too much for me, you know. Uh, I, didn't, I couldn't put uh, additional fat into it. 
and I was starting to feeling really, really good. And uh, that uh, you said about intermittent fasting, it was also very good for myself. You know, it was so. So that's why I I think that people should uh, start to tr to try this kind of diet, but adjust to it. I think so. It, well, well, number one. Oils come from plants, fats come from animals. We need to begin to talk that way because it's confusing. And all plant fats have chemicals that plants make for some purpose. But animal fat is the same as our fat, which is does not have any toxins of any significance to my knowledge. Uh, I go to beef over chicken, fish, or any other animal personally, but lamb and goat uh, and pork, I think, are still good for us. And you're right, you know, it's doing a different diet is so different and, and, and could be disastrous. And we all get so frustrated, we want to give up quickly. But when you eat fatty meat, and and you prime where you eat you you eat as much as you want in a day two or three or four of of fatty meat and steak and eggs and butter and 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 bacon and 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 and, and even a little bit of cheese for some people to tolerate it then you you feel amazing and then you begin like oh my god i'm so full then you can begin to start your let's just say you start at three meals a day then you go to two meals a day and a snack. Well, then you go to one meal a day and two snacks. And then you go to one meal a day and one snack. And then you go to one meal a day. So everything's a transition. And we're working in coaches like yourself that will help guide us because we all need a coach in this. How does it done? Because this is so radical for almost everyone. Uh, that that we really need the help, but it is it takes patience and time. I've been doing this for almost twelve years, and do I sometimes have some French fries or two meals a day? Sure, I do, but mostly I have my, my one meal at night, and I might have a snack or two. I even might have a little chocolate or my ice cream, but again, small amounts from time to time. And I've been off coffee for three months now which is kind of radical. I just would like to ask about coffee, but uh, uh, at the, I have one more question before. Oh, please. Uh, because uh, many people think that, uh, and also ask me about it, you know, you stand up, but how did you get all vitamins, all minerals, if you have only meat and, uh, for example, eggs and butter? How can you absorb uh, the vitamins and minerals if you don't eat vegetables and fruit because i think that people think that uh, you should eat uh, vegetables and uh, fruit because it, it contains vitamins and minerals and doesn't know how it looks like exactly because doesn't know about what is inside of our meat of our of our eggs <laughs> maybe not mine uh in generally speaking, you know, about uh, meat and eggs. And I would like to know what do you think about it? Uh, because I know that uh, uh, eggs and meat contains a lot of vitamins, which is they contain all They contain all of the minerals and vitamins our body needs. That, that we, there's no other animal in the universe prior to human beings uh, domesticating animals and then limiting their diet too, probably that we realize maybe they need some vitamins. But ultimately, most of us don't need don't need vitamins anyway. Vitamin deficiency is extremely rare and remote, extremely rare, and and even protein protein deficiencies are very rare. Uh, but we know that that fat depletion is common for some people because of anorexia. But ultimately. Where are all the minerals and vitamins? To me, they're in liver, they're in the meat, and they're in the eggs. And if I stick to that, it's like, I don't need any supplements. Some people take some organ meat supplements, and we sell some, but again, do you need it? 
yeah, maybe not. Yeah, it's it's a huge market of supplements uh, in Poland as well. And uh, I've always said that okay, it's it's okay to add some of them, but it uh, can't be based. Uh, your diet can't be based on supplements because people would like to you know have this uh, this uh, uh, pill, this pill, and this pill on the. Uh, in the morning, the spill in the evening, and it's going to be my supplements, my minerals. But they doesn't know that uh, it's it's not work like that, you know. You just need your food to supplement yourself, mostly. Well, again, we're no animal is meant to seek out vitamins. No animal says, "Did I get the right macronutrients today? Uh, did I get my minerals and vitamins?" Omega threes versus omega sixes. What animal knows that? Is a, it's just, again, the confusion is science. We're, 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 we're screwing up humanity. Basically, if you think about the, the development of agriculture, and, and, and basically, if you, all agriculture today is fertilized. Yeah. If you simply allow the ruminant animals to roam the land and eat the natural uh, 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 grass that's there uh, better and you know we would we and if we ate those animals my bet is is that all of the world can consume a meat based fatty meat based diet if we uh, we allowed all the farmland of the world to be reconverted and allow it to be grazing animals because fat from an animal is twice the calories Think of all the industrialization and the and the pollution and all the things that happens via all of our plant production, which is processed. You know, right? wheat is a processed product. Sugar's processed. Um, ultimately, now all the the vegan meats are all industrial processed. Like nature makes eggs, it makes bacon, it makes. It, you know, butter obviously has some uh, production, but but it isn't that difficult. Uh, but but ultimately, beef, beef and, and and eggs are like the the best. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, about um, uh, meat, actually. You know, because uh, we know that some people can't uh, afford uh, this organic kind of eggs or meat. And they've always asked me, okay, Justina, but I'm not able to find this kind of meat or uh, if they can even find, they are not able to, to buy it because it's not as cheap as uh, the ordinary meat in the, in, the, in the shop. So what do you think about this uh, two different kinds of uh, sources of meat? Should we, should we worry so much about this? Uh, this kind of meat in 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 shops. No, you forget forget uh, thinking about organic or inorganic, grass fed versus grain fed. It's irrelevant. It's such a minus, minuscule. I, I, again, I don't trust the science. Cholesterol causes no disease, and low cholesterol is deadly for us. Deadly. A low animal fat diet is the deadliest thing we've ever uh, shared with humanity but again we're being domesticated and domestication is basically dictating what we should consume in order to control us but yeah uh, your butcher or your rancher or your farmer that's raising the animals is your best friend and your best doctor your best healer okay that's that's really really it in in all of this again it's it's crazy it's radical but there's my it, friend too <laughs> and it's simple right it's so simple so simple and so again i i i read all the science but but i i asked the question hans krebs and otto warburg worked in a pre-nazi germany laboratory in the 1920s were they were they strictly thinking about science or did politics have anything to do with the fact that they made glucose somehow the king of, of your energy source because ultimately they wanted to convince everyone that glucose was the most important energy source in order to sell more sugar. Even back then we were dictated of, of what I call a scientific lie. Otto Warburg figured out that glucose would cause a cancer, but Hans Krebs 
was convinced that sugar is the primary fuel for the Krebs cycle. It's not, not one bit. It cannot provide energy for, for the Krebs cycle. It's a precursor to, to acetyl-CoA as a fatty acid made in the liver via insulin. And, and, and ketosis is not the conversion of burning sugar to burning fat. And we don't get fat adapted. If you don't have fat, make fat, your fertilizer fast. And again, these concepts and ideas are radical. We want the science to teach us something really magical. Yeah, it's, it's true. I can see the same situation in Poland that uh... Okay, but uh, I would like to ask you about, I think, uh, really important, uh, um, because you are a doctor with a lot of experience and uh, mostly, usually, people for, for, for fighting for having uh, children, yeah? Uh, but uh, could, you, could you please um, tell us what kind of diseases uh, have, you, have been stopped uh, um, or reversed or completely cured? Um, with carnivore diet, could you? Because I know that people would like to know this success sto story. You know, well, well, when you eat food, especially plants, it goes into the into the bowels, and the fiber and the sugars ferment and make gas, which causes bloating, GERD, or or the esophageal stuff, and then it causes excessive gas below right? And because of the alcohol uh, made, it causes, I think it causes a lot of, a lot of brain fog and it causes a lot of depression. So number one, I've seen all of those diseases go away. I've seen Crohn's, colitis, uh, bowel bleeding go away, arthritis, psoriasis, eczema, psoriasis, gone, arthritis, gone. Uh, I've seen migraines go away and I've seen all of it go away in very short amount of time, hypertension goes away. And, and again, it's, uh, I, I'm a doctor, I make money seeing patients that are sick and, and I write them prescriptions, I do di dissections. What reason would I have to tell people all to eat this other than the reason we're in medicine is to help people. But literally every single disease, I believe, significantly improves or goes away depending on how much damage is done already. Yeah. And that's diabetes, true. type one and type two I've seen go away. Yeah, that, that's true. And uh, uh, what about having kids? Because I think that uh, a lot of girls here uh, would like to know if it's really possible to, to have kids on this kind of diet. When the number of fertility patients seeking IVF around the world is growing exponentially. And it's because of the diet that's damaging us as much as anything else besides postponing childbearing. Uh, but yes, uh, I've seen carnivore for getting pregnant, staying pregnant, after you deliver your baby and you're breastfeeding pregnant, and beyond, and your children should do the same thing. And we need to change it because our children are dying. They're suicidal. They're, they're all sorts of disorders. And we're blaming it on I don't know what. But what I've found is that carnivore is like amazing. Depression, schizophrenia, uh, anxiety, uh, all ADHD, OCD is amazing. And, and again, even the, the, the cholesterol science is a lie. It's a lie. It's to sell drugs. And again, maybe we believe the science was right. Everyone was searching for the, the drugs, but yeah, everything goes away. And, and fertility, both repetitive losses, IVF pregnancies improve. But my job is to improve your natural outcome and prevent the disease and the suffering before it happens. Yes, that, that is very important. Not to, you know, because everyone wants to 
uh, be healthy, but they doesn't want to change their diet and uh, the way of living, you know, and that's the crucial thing, I think, that it is uh, important that we should know that we focus on uh, what we put on our plate. It's, it's the most important thing. It is so, uh, so easy and so hard in the same time, <laughs> you know. But the most valuable things in life are hard discernment, right? You, 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 you can't be drinking, smoking, injecting, and, and, and having f uh, infinite boyfriends and girlfriends and sex with everyone is not good. You know, sex is not meant to be a, an amusement park. It's, it, it's discernment for family building, ultimately. But we propagated it as, oh, everyone should have fun, sow their seeds, and guess what? The diseases are rampant. And because we've, we've lost our way. And, and this is part of our problem in this world. We eat too much of the wrong things. And we're told the wrong, we're, we're, we're fed a lie. Yes. yes. And, and, and the easy part is when you go to a meat-based diet for a week, you feel so good. It's so easy. You don't want lettuce anymore. And lettuce is nature's toilet paper. It's <laughs> yeah. deadly. Deadly. Yeah. And we're mostly, eating it. I don't know if you have the same uh, in the United States, but I, I think so that the same uh, mostly that uh, the most vegan products are really, it's a poison, you know, because when you see the ingredients of it, it's, it's, it's a poison. It's, 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 it's hopeless, you know. Uh, that it, and the people think that they are uh, they are saving the world. They are going to be healthy, and uh, the world is going to be healthy because they are going to eat Beyond Meat, for example, or soya-based uh, uh, products. And they are not going to be healthy, and their kids are not going to be healthy uh, uh, as well. Uh, neither. And you know uh, that that's the problem. That lies and lies. Lies is going to be you know. The true, if if we are going to talk about it, that it is a true, you know. Well, and and I, as a doctor, people come to me and they want to know what they can do to improve their pregnancy chances or heal diseases. And my job is to start and talk. I talk about faith and belief in God. I talk about what we consume and then what we, where do we hang out? What are we doing with our bodies? These are all very important things to really great, amazing health and wellness in this world. Yeah. So please tell me about caffeine, actually, because this is a <laughs> really, really great topic uh, uh, in Poland right now, because it, uh, a couple of days before, I remember that it was a coffee day. We, we celebrate a coffee day today. So we have to celebrate this kind of day. And... Uh, I'm I, I, I'm not sure that I'm one. I, I think that I'm one of the first. Uh, uh, I'm one of the Instagram person who is not uh, going to uh, have this day uh, like a celebration because I think that we shouldn't drink coffee, you know. And uh, uh, in Poland, we have the the research that uh, you should drink coffee because it's really good for you and. Uh, uh you, you you have a lot of magnesium from coffee from caffeine and you should drink as much as you can <laughs> pour into yourself so i would like to know your your story about it well i love coffee i've been drinking coffee for 50 years i've been off coffee three or four times through the years mostly when i've been sick because when i'm sick it tastes horrible I love butter in my coffee. <clears throat> Three months ago plus, I stopped coffee cold turkey, and I haven't had a sip. Uh, I haven't had any caffeine, no power drinks at all. I drank a little bit of decaf tea the other day. Uh, I, I, and, and, but 99%, I, I believe that coffee is just another poisonous product that we've been duped to believe is good for us. Because, see... I mean, every 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 uh, product sold is is marketed by the people who believe in it. Now, does it taste good and make you feel good? Yeah, sure it does. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's good for you. And look, at, everyone here needs to pick and choose the things that they're willing to do. Is a little bit of coffee the thing that's going to take you down? Probably not. Is a lot of coffee? Maybe. 
right? And what's too much? I don't know that answer. No one really does. Uh, 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 anaphylactic or allergic reactions happen in a dust particle of a, of a plant, right? Uh, and that's the part that people don't understand. And, and so some people probably are high allergic to, to, to coffee. And most people probably tend to tolerate it reasonably well, but it's, it's a crazy one. But I gave it up, and I don't know if I'll go back because I do believe overall it's not great for us. And the same thing with alcohol, tea. They're not good for us. There's mold. See, tea, I think, has more mold because coffee is roasted where most tea leaves are not. And so the tea leaves are dried and they may contain more mold and more bacteria and more toxins than, 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 uh, than coffee, uh, in my opinion. But again, I, I, I'm not talking research. I'm talking about what my observation and belief is based on my knowledge of how it's all prepared. Yeah, actually, I have this kind of experience because I like coffee very much, you know, the, the taste and the, the smell of it. So, so I, I drink coffee and, uh, but I, I had a lot of problems with my uh, colon. Uh, so I, I, I decided to stop just like that. You know, I've read about uh, caffeine and uh, I thought, okay, maybe it's going to be some kind of, Uh, other step on to build myself to build my health and uh, I can say that it was really really good uh, idea to do this because uh, I have a lot of improvement and also my followers uh, my audience uh, uh, some of people also change change it and uh, stop to drink uh, coffee or uh lower the the amount of caffeine and they also have a lot of improvement that's why i think that maybe some caffeine can be uh, uh, uh you know profitable for for some time to time but uh, i can see on myself that it was really good step to quit uh, i don't drink tea because i don't like it alcohol at all That's where we all really should be. I mean, historically, for the last three and a half million years, we probably, you know, there was no tea, no coffee, and no alcohol. But, but it is entertainment. I mean, plus, see, I take three naps a day. I sleep six hours at night, uh, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. I get up early. I do my early work. The early bird, you know, the, 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 that's the best time of day. And coffee was always that, like, thing. I think I take more naps now that I'm off coffee because coffee was that stimulant that kept me going. But ultimately, carnivores, they rest and nap a lot. They're not running around grazing all day. The grazing animals are eating all the time because they have to eat a lot of grass and grains in order to get the calories with the fermentation from the bacteria and the yeast and the ruminants. But, but carnivores... They, they eat the ruminants, they sleep a lot, and, and that's, that's really it. We need to nap more and stop snacking. Naps, no snap, no snacks, and naps reset the synapse. The, the neurons of the brain and the body need to reset themselves through rest. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, I was all, all, all the time, uh, I, I felt that I stimulate myself too much, you know, because of caffeine. And even if I drink only one, because I didn't drink, uh, you know, five a day, no. But uh, even if I drink caffeine, I just felt myself very nervous. And also my daughter, she, she felt that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. So when I stopped drinking coffee... I was calmer in this kind of nervous situation. So I, I, was, I was calmer. Well, that's, someone said to me, they, I, and they commented that I seem calmer. Now, I'm very high energy. I'm ADHD and OCD in some ways, which I think is beneficial. We treat people for things that are not diseases. They're just our natural interactions. But yeah, I'm much more calm now that, that I'm this, and I'm less reactive to the challenges of my life. 
Yeah. And I think caffeine makes you want to lash out. And whether it's from tea or coffee or plants. So you remember plants contain lots of stimulants. Yeah, that's true. For example, yer yerba mate is the same as caffeine, yeah? But yes. also histamine reaction, I think, uh, that uh, because caffeine is also uh, uh, made histamine more, uh, you know, so, so I, I've also uh, s seen that my body is calmer because of histamine, because I had also the, the problem with too much histamine. Well, I think that the histamine reactions are purely from a plant-based low animal fat diet because even a high protein diet is deadly for us. See, proteins uh, from lean meat, I think have some antigenic histaminic uh, properties. And that's why we should not eat chicken or fish or lean meat of any frequency or significance. Animals, lions eat the fatty meat. Now, is it possible or probable? I mean, everything we eat has some reactions that might be antigenic, causing some inflammation, for sure. But it's less so when you eat the fatty meat. When you eat, I do bone broth, bone marrow, and, and fatty meat, for sure. I just wanted to ask the last question about uh, uh, meat stock, because I'm, on a, I'm GAPS coach, and I always uh, uh, recommend people to, to cook uh, meat stock and enjoy it, uh, you know, because it's really healing for us. What do you think about, do, do, you, uh, uh, do you use the meat stock in your, in your uh, uh, way of eating? I do, so bone broth, I, I bone love broth. bone broth. Yes, uh, whether it's chicken bone broth from the skin, the fat, the, the, the everything. And, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's probably the thing to drink a little bit more than water. Uh, the bone broth is really good. Bone marrow is great for sure. I do. I do it. It's really helpful. Yeah, I'm happy about it. <laughs> so and and I put a little bit. I use mostly. I use mostly malt and salt. But some people use Himalayan or Redmond's. Whatever you use, you know, salt. There's so many even local salts around the globe that that people are are making. It's really really amazing. Yeah. Okay, uh, I would like to ask uh, if people have some questions so you can uh, answer it. So if you have some questions, please, uh, uh, people, uh, oh my God, too, too, too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, can, can you, the diabetes of people will find inflammation level of the higher risk for heart disease associated with uh, about I, I think that's, uh, it's about co cholesterol. Uh, so maybe we can talk uh, a little bit just about cholesterol because uh, in Poland it's a topic uh, of number one that you shouldn't have the high cholesterol because it's really damaged for, for your body. So could you please explain us uh, a little bit? Well, our body is made up of mostly fat, uh, uh, lipoproteins uh, and, and phospholipids and cholesterol. And without these membranes full of cholesterol, we would not be alive. And, um, and, and, and I'm just going to show this because I wanted to answer the question, ah. what butter, uh, French butter is what I use. It's from France. Amazing. Butter boy. And, and I do a little carry gold. I just saw that real quick. But yeah, cholesterol. So years ago, Ansel Keys and others did some studies around the world, and they kind of fudge the data to suggest that fat and cholesterol was the cause of disease, when in fact, uh, 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 Ludkin uh, basically said, and I may have his name wrong, but it was sugar. But, but there was the two camps, and, and basically fat won the, won the war. Fat's the cause of disease, and cholesterol's a killer, and so let's take, let's take all the fat, all the butter, and all the animal fat out and let's add plant oils Margarine. and we'll all get healthy. And so along with that, if you just see the, 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 the line of diseases going up uh, due to plant oils and vegetables and fruit and fiber, but lean meat. So, so fatty meat was reduced and yet we're getting sicker and they blame, still blame the fatty meat. 
And so cholesterol is, a, is the studies really, if you look deeply at the data, it's all a lie. But, but they did not want it, they didn't want to share the lie because they still believe they were right, but the data just wasn't sharing the right answer, right? Yeah. And so that's not science, right? That's nonsense. And we are, we are, then a drug was developed to lower your cholesterol, which was making billions and trillions of dollars. Yeah. And it's like tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana and all sorts of other drugs. I mean, we cannot take away the money stream that's so important for people. And ultimately, the science is wrong. Cholesterol is critical. Low cholesterol, depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's, suicide go up. And so the diseases go up. And now that we have social media, we have the ability, and I'm not trying to publish any papers here because they're not gonna get published. Ain't gonna happen. And if we're waiting for a prospective randomized study, it's not gonna happen. But basically, when you eat the fat, you fuel the Ferrari, you feel better. And when you use the cholesterol lowering drugs, you also add the problem of, of increasing diabetes and all sorts of side effects from all of this. So it really is the cholesterol. There's a couple of books I have links on my website, drkilts.com, that actually kind of talk a lot about the science. And David Diamond has a couple of YouTubes, and we have some links there also. But basically, it, we, we, we try to sort of, some of these, some of us cholesterol doctors or keto doctors are just kind of dancing around the story. We don't want to quite say, we kind of say, well, it's not, the data's not completely in, we're still studying it. You know, we are alive today. We don't have time to wait for the study in 100 years. And since we already know the answer, why do we wait, right? We don't need to. And if you read uh, The Big Fat Surprise by Nina, Ty Chultz, another good one. I know mm -hmm. someone just mentioned that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good one to link in all this. But yeah, cholesterol is critical for your reproduction, your hormones, your neurotransmitters, your nervous system, and your brain function. And, you know, too many people are suffering from, from dementia and Alzheimer's today. Yeah. That's true. Uh, one lady said that uh, she was a vegetarian and, and she also had uh, the high cholesterol. So it's uh, yeah, but well, mostly, well, again, mostly doctors and uh, all, you know, researchers said that uh, we have high cholesterol because we eat meat and we eat butter. So we, 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 we should switch uh, on, into the margarine, you know. <laughs> well, 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 again, the, the, even the conversation of high cholesterol is worthless. Like, don't even measure it because there's no value to it. Because look at the laboratory sciences that test everything are all based on diseases that are caused by plants. Okay? And so, I mean, we've never shown that preventive medicine works. Never. People die of heart disease and cancer despite the fact that they're on the drugs and they go to the doctors all the time. Yeah. That's it. So, so they're, you know, we're, we're trying to blame someone or something here. And, and, and Occam's razor says the simple answer is the one. Mm -hmm. The simple answer is that we make it too complicated. Yeah. We're trying true. to come up. We're trying to find, well, let's understand the science of keto or carnivore. Like, it's, you're a lion. Do lions, like, run around wondering, have you seen the latest journal of, like, you know, uh, all the diseases running rapid in the, in, the, in the carnivore world? Like, you just look at us carnivores, and the diseases are all going away. Yes. We don't true. need a scientist to tell us any of this. And this is our problem. And... And ultimately, we should be mostly coaches and cheerleaders and butchers and, and ranchers. A little bit, we need, we need, you know, maybe we need some of the farming in order to grow some of the plants because we love our flowers and our decoration. Yeah, our decoration and grass, you know, a lot of yes, grass we love and grass. nothing else. <laughs>
<laughs> well, well, remember the grass and the bushes and the trees are the glycobiome. Without the glycobiome, all the soil is eroded. And so the glycobiome is the most important component of our body. Yeah. Uh, please tell us about uh, uh, diary, because I know that you eat uh, butter, but uh, what about, uh, I mean, not pasteurized, but uh, do you recommend uh, for some people, for example, milk, uh, raw milk, I mean the raw milk, because not from the shop, but raw milk, cheese, uh, uh, something uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, cream? Uh, so, fatty meat and organ meats is probably the very best with or without salt, with or without water, too much water. You don't need a little bit of water. And whether it's, whether it's mineralized water or not, I, I don't think we've proven it yet. We just like it. It's another product to sell. Um, and, and, uh, butter, cream, cheese, milk, yogurt, sour cream, whatever it is, those are, cow milk products that cow's milk is meant for a calf a baby cow human milk is meant for a baby human and so a baby human should stop drinking milk after they've done suckling and then they should go and start eating steak and that's it now some of us can tolerate cow's milk and milk products some of us cannot. Uh, lactose intolerance is very common, but some people are better able to tolerate it. And so, so I know I can reasonably tolerate butter, cheese, and cream, but some people just can't. And so we have to be aware that some people are more capable than others uh, in that. And, and, and inflammation is tricky because most inflammation is subclinical most of the time, you don't know what's happening. And then it shows up as heart failure, heart attack, cancer, and death. There's so many people dying at younger ages of unknown causes. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and of course. It's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, kids uh, who are already ill when they are born, so it's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, diseases, which uh, we couldn't see before even, you know, because uh, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, uh, autism, for example, it was a really rare uh, disease. And now it's mostly in, the, in uh, all countries. And you can see even one on a, on a five kids uh, uh, has autism, you know. Uh, right. We can, and we can and, and if, they, if they eat this, and no more plants, many of them will get better if not healed altogether because they're eating basically a drug. You yes. know, like if, and, if and I gave a child parents. heroin every day or if I gave them alcohol every day and they were drugged out, would we be surprised? Nope. Yeah, and we know babies that are born from mothers that are on drugs come out ill. Well, mothers that are eating plants the plant chemicals are going right to the baby and damaging the brain and every organ of the body. Are we surprised? Yeah. We're not. Unfortunately, We're not. unfortunately, a lot of people uh, uh, just uh, doesn't want to see this connection of our uh, uh, connection of uh, food and diseases, you know? Uh, well, again, because it's, it's not obvious. That's our problem. But it's because not obvious. Because nobody wants be to do the research because it's not going to be profitable for anyone, you know. For, I mean, for any companies who is going it, to earn money. It, it's, it's, if, if I'm telling everyone that plants are deadly, that has a major effect on, on the economy. Now, I'm not worried that the majority of people are going to even listen to me because... We love our tobacco, our alcohol, our co coffee, our tea, and our plants. I love cookies, cake, and ice cream. Will I give it up completely? No, because 
I'm really good at having it only infrequently in small amounts, but most people are not. And so you got to figure out where you're at, but if it causes an anaphylactic reaction, you could be dead fast. And again, this is really, really radical, these concepts and ideas, but um, it's, it is obvious to us carnivores after we've done it. And it'll be obvious to everyone once they've done it for a short amount of time. They'll be like, wow, wow. Yeah. And uh, please tell me about the fish. Uh, do you eat fish, any fatty fish, or you don't eat it? Well, if you cook a ribeye steak or fatty meat in a pan, it fills up with a lot of grease, doesn't it? Yeah. But if you cook a fatty fish in a pan, do you ever see much fat in a pan? Not really. M no. Maybe some of them, but I don't, I don't like fish, actually. So I don't eat it uh, very often. Maybe some, uh, some seafood, but it's not, so, it, it's not my uh, uh, basic stuff, you know, because I don't like it. And I can see that, for example, in my case, I have a problem with digestion after fish. So uh, I prefer to eat meat. And uh, I think that if people want to eat fish, they can try it. But uh, for myself, it, it, it's not a good idea to do this. Fish swims in the world's toxic waters. And whether it's arsenic or mercury or other chemicals that basically we piss and poop and put in the waters, or, or it's the microplastics that basically uh, it's, it's not good for us of any significance or frequency, in my opinion. Now, a salmon or, or, or fish eggs, maybe, but maybe the same problem too. I, I don't recommend it in general. Now, maybe some farm-raised fish that are in a non-toxic waters, maybe. I mean, farmed fish is just going to grow. Um, I like oysters, but but my primary meal is still ribeye steak, 99% of the time. So chicken, fish, turkey, all the lean meats that we've all been yeah. taught to eat, which are mass produced now, uh, which I just don't think are good for us. Okay. Uh I think that we can, uh, uh, we are almost done, I think. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not going to interrupt you all. all, uh, <laughs> all I'm evening. good. I'm good. I'm enjoying this. Okay. But I, because I've, oh, I've seen one more question and I would like to um, explain, and I think that you, you will explain the better than, than, than me, uh, but somebody asked uh, ask about arthritis. We, we, we spoke about it, that we can, maybe yes we can cure all kind of diseases uh, this way so i think that we can uh one more time uh, say that it doesn't matter what kind of diagnosis you have because for for example for me i had a lot of problems with my bones with my uh i i also had uh, the diagnosis of uh Uh, n not only Lyme disease, but uh, before it was arthritis because they didn't know what was going to what was going uh, happen. Uh, sorry about my English, but I'm <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, when I start to eat grains, all grains, not only uh, gluten uh, with, with this one with gluten, but all all grains. Uh, I start to have arthritis and all, uh, you know, all issue with my, with my uh, joints, you know. So only, only with, uh, with, without, uh, you know, grains. So for me, it was, it, I, I've been done, you know. All plants, all plants contain, all plants are mostly sugar. They contain chemicals to control and kill us. They control, can contain antigenic components like lectins, oxalates, phytates, or glycoproteins 
that cause inflammation everywhere in your body. It starts your, your lips, your tongue, rest of your esophagus, your tonsils, everything. And then plants bring with them the microbes that ferment in your, in your body. So, so ultimately, the one thing, so high protein diets, by the way, ferment also. And so when we say carnivore, we're talking about fat. Fativore is really, really, really amazing. And so, and so the, the, um, the concepts here are radical, but arthritis, psoriasis, kidney stones, migraines, or unknown, right? How many times do people like just don't feel good, but we don't know what it is. It's either the, the, the sugar, the chemicals, the antigens, the microbes doing what they love to do inside of you, that's all it is. And so if you eliminate all those things which are completely unnecessary in our diets, then like you'll feel amazing. And your doctor, you go to your doctor, you feel great, you don't need your drugs, and they're gonna be like, wow, what are you doing? And you're gonna tell them carnivore, they're gonna laugh at you, okay? Yes, that's true. That, All that, you need to say is, you know, you're gonna say, doctor, this is my last visit. I really great to know you. Maybe I'll meet you out on the street sometime. And then they're gonna ask you, Kid, what are you doing? You look amazing. And again, you're gonna explain it. Some of them are gonna to begin to listen. Some we need to share this with our doctors. It's critical. And we need to go to our doctors and share with them because I've learned from my patients through the years. I listen to my patients when they're doing something. Again, I learned all of this from my patients. Massage, acupuncture, meditation, prayer, paleo, keto, carnivore. I discovered on my own. <laughs> But it is great, you know, that you are amazing that because sometimes, you know, we, you know, we have so big ego, you know, that we, we just don't want to listen to anyone, you know, because uh, I've always, my, my uh, way of, uh, you know, I, I've struggled so many years, you know, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't uh, meet a doctor. I, I think that they, 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 Maybe they try to help me, but mostly it was drugs, drugs and operation. And uh, they told me uh, that it's not going to be better. I'm going to die. And they doesn't want to know uh, what they, they just didn't want to um, just, you know, they they tried to help me, but they couldn't. You know, they, they put a lot of uh, a lot of drugs uh, into my uh, into my system and uh, uh, they couldn't help me. So I think that it wasn't like uh, uh, that, that they wanted to do this to me, you know, because I was very young and it was uh, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of years of struggling, but they, they didn't want to know something different, you know, something else, something not from the medical school. They just... Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately, all people want to be healthy. Everyone wants to be healthy. But because our advice, again, that we didn't know, <clears throat> continues to make them worse, and then they add drugs, and no matter what they do, they feel worse, because they're not only on the drug that we have get prescribed to them, they're on the, the drugs from the plants we prescribe to them, and and no one wants to be overweight or a drug addict or an alcoholic or negative and nasty. No one wants that. But we're feeding that through the nutrition we're, we're recommending because, and then they, what do you want to do when nothing's working? You want to eat more, drink more, inject more in order to be momentarily happy through the moment you're getting the orgasmic pleasure of whatever that thing is. And ultimately, this world, we're, we're, just, we're just minions of domesticated plant eaters. And yet, we are lions. 
that were, were removed from the lion's lair and placed in the pig's pen. And now we think we're pigs. And it tastes good, doesn't it? And, and yet, the more we, this is a groundswell, we're, we're sowing the seeds in order to plant, to feed the carnivores so we can share more with people how at whatever age, goodbye diseases. Now, again, we're all going to die. You know, having a, uh, being unhealthy or having a disease is not, is not the end of your life. People are plenty happy no matter what. My sister died of diabetes at 52. She had it since age four. She was always happy. She did not live a life of unhappiness. But might she have been happier had she been given more of a direction that, that, that she felt different? My hopes are we can do better in this life. And, and uh, coconut oil, I don't recommend very often. Uh, but if you're a vegan, it's an option. A vegetarian, butter, eggs, cream, cheese. Actually, I, I have an opinion uh, about coconut oil because uh, I used to try it a lot. And uh, now I, I uh, use it for the oil pooling in the morning. But I don't uh, eat it because I, I, um, I saw that my body, it's, it's not, uh, uh, you know, uh, after eating coconut oil, I had problems with my digestion system. So I decided to stop. And uh, if you, I think, in my opinion, if you are able to digest it, you can try, but... Well, it's a seed nut oil, and seeds and nuts are highly antigenic. And again, butter and cream and milk are antigenic also. So again, we, we, it's allowed. Again, the word allowed is, listen, you can eat anything you want. You may tolerate it very well. But ultimately, in the long term, it may be a contributing factor to the diseases because it has a low level antigenicity or an immunologic response that you might not know about until the unknown cause of a disease or death happens. But I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I've already uh, informed uh, my, uh, my audience that, um, that you can uh, also uh, consult a patient. So uh, I, I did put uh, your email on my story. So if someone would like to have consultation with you, it's possible. Uh, I, I just thank you so much that you would like to meet me because it's incredible that we can meet each other and you live so far away, you know. And I can learn from you and I can see that uh, I'm on my, my way, way. It's it's good way, you know. I mean, uh, I've tried so, so many uh, different approaches and I thought that my life, it's, it's finished, you know. So uh, now I can see that, that it's not, not yet. <laughs> because I not know that yet. we are all, it's go we are all going to die, so definitely, but uh, maybe not now. Uh, what about honey? Uh, uh, honey? I, I, a, a little bit of honey or fruit or white sugar cane or beet sugar from time to time, but of any frequency or significance, I, I don't recommend it. And honey contains bacteria, yeast, microbes, and antigenic pollen from plants. And remember, honey is just is just sugar from a plant. If you think about it, that's all it is. And so again, a little bit from time to time, okay, but if you're doing it all the time thinking it's good, I don't recommend it. In my case also the, the, the honey it was not a good idea because of uh, also the, I, I felt the glucose level was, you know, higher and I was like a, you know uh and also had a problem with inflammation after uh, after honey so i i don't recommend it uh, either and uh, i think uh, it's not profitable for us but if you can if you want to add it i 
for example, if you are addicted to sugar, I mean to, to sweets, yeah, because a lot of people are addicted to, to sweets and they want to change the diet. Uh, Natasha Campbell McBride, uh, uh, I don't know if you know her, is, she's a GAPS uh, doctor and uh, she recommends to eat a lot of butter with a little bit of honey to just switch, you know, the, uh, the, the sweets uh, from the shop to a lot of butter and a little bit of uh, honey. So you are able to, uh, to stop eating a lot of sweets and uh, chips and so on. So, so I think that it is at the beginning of the, of the carnivore, it's, uh, it can be beneficial for well, some. It, so I make an ice cream, it's made of cream, a little bit of vanilla bean uh, and an egg. Uh, and it doesn't require sugar, or you can put as much sugar in you want. So maybe it's a little bit like caffeine and coffee. If you're trying to get off the caffeine addiction, you do you do full caffeine, half and a half, a uh, quarter and three quarters, and you keep on going down until it's none, and then you eliminate it. The same thing can be done with your sugar addiction. You start with uh, either butter or my ice cream, and you, you, you do whatever I do two tablespoons per, no, I used to do long ago, uh, two tablespoons, then I went to two teaspoons, then I went to one teaspoon, then I went to half a teaspoon, then I go to no teaspoons. And so, you know, you everyone's gonna find the place for them. And I do a little bit of white sugar from time to time because a little bit of sugar quickly goes to the liver, insulin goes up quickly, it's converted to fat in the liver quickly. But again, some people can't do that. Don't touch it. But my, my ice cream without sugar like, is like amazing. Yeah, I have to try it because I didn't try it. So I have to do this. Yeah. And definitely. it's simple. Like anything else, I eat at home a lot. I love cooking. And I go to a few restaurants where they know what I like and I know they have what I like. And I make sure I'm, I'm really sticking to that that agenda of what I want. And yeah. it's, and, and again, this is a journey. There's no judgment in this. I, I take care of vegans, vegetarians, Mediterraneans, pescatarians, and carnivarians. I'm taking care of everyone. And I want everyone to know they're welcome in this conversation. If you're really suffering, it, it, carnivore is the way. But as a vegetarian, you can do it. Vegans are harder, but Coconut, a lot of coconut oil with with a, a simple white rice or white potatoes can be helpful. But the problem is you can't get all your essential amino acids without either eggs or meat. That's it. Yeah, that's the, that's the big problem. I think that uh, most vegetarian doesn't uh, know what to eat exactly. I mean, uh, they eat a lot of processed food because if you are vegetarian and you, if you can digest the food i mean because i couldn't digest for example a lot of grains and a lot of fruits and vegetables for for myself it, for, for me it was really a, a huge problem to digest it and uh, i also because some somebody said that uh, she she doesn't like meat i had the same problem because i i when i was a child i didn't want to eat meat at all and i i had to you know it was a it was a process, a big process for me to to find a way that I can eat this meat because I just I, I just hate it really. I just hate the meat and I didn't want to eat it. So I think that it is a process. Well, and and we're brainwashed. And even if you don't, if you you didn't, you don't remember actively listening and learning that we're brainwashed because that's called marketing everyone's told that red meat's bad for you. So, you know, it's like, oh, no, that's bad for you. Again, even as an infant, where you didn't even understand, you might not have remembered any language, it's there. Oh, no, don't eat that. Oh, that's deadly. That's terrible. Oh, my God, you're eating that? I mean, look at us, right? And, and but it's, it's radical. Lions at, that, are, that, are, that are taken into the pig pen love to eat the grass and the grains because it's highly addictive. So 
our ability to not eat it is hard because it's highly toxic and addictive. And, but, but once you start, like, you got to change the language. And that's why listening to you, and we're all, we're all, we're all suffering. No one wants to suffer. We want to learn a new way. And, and whether it's, it's um, a, a bone broth you start with, right? Maybe you grind the meat up. But I always say uh, 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 beef off a bone is better than mush out of a bowl. Basically, grass and grains and glutens and all the other chemicals are, are deadly. And, and the fatty meat, oh, my God, it's masterful. The kings and the queens of the world prevented the peasants, the prisoners, the slaves, and the soldiers from eating the meat, and they didn't allow them on, on to the hunting grounds. And if you think about the dictators and the presidents and the kings and the queens around the world, they made money on the peasants, the slaves, the soldiers, and the prisoners, and they were the opium suppliers and the heroin cocaine suppliers, the tobacco and alcohol suppliers, and the grass and grain suppliers. So ultimately, we are now capable of becoming the lions, the leaders ourselves, by eating meat. Stop being meek, because meekness is gained by eating mush. But when you eat the meat, you become the master. And we all want to be the master. So eat the fat, and you'll feel the fittest. And by the way, being fat causes no disease, none. The cause of disease is the, is, the, is the lean meat and the fruits and vegetables, seeds and nuts, grass and grains that you eat. And when you eliminate all of that and eat fatty meat, magic. And then, then you're able to be your own leader and master uh, in this world. Yeah, that's true. So thank you very much that you wanted to 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 meet me and my audience uh, as well and uh, i hope to see you soon and i i'm going to translate our uh, our uh, live i mean uh, uh, only myself uh, i'm going to answer the questions uh, to my audience i i think that uh, uh, mostly people can understand everything but uh, but uh, I will try to explain if they are going to have a question. Uh, I would like to also uh, uh, you remember that you can uh, have consultation with the doctor and uh, have a great day because I know that you have a day. We are going to have a night now. But, but I'm, I'm also capable and I love this because I love even the lives when people ask the questions and you translate it back to them in Polish live i'm good with that sometime because i think it's very important that we begin to work around the world in 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 translating these stories for all of us and uh this is important to do uh and we can also do it on our side because we'll share this with our uh our uh, uh community which is really a global community this is, this is not mine or yours it's it's a global community. That's why it's so important that this happens globally. And and I've just been amazed at at the at the healing that people are gaining. And I think it's going to help people. Again, there's so many diseases in every part of the world, which is the same thing. Yeah, that's that's true. It's unbelievable how people are suffering all over the world. So I think that it is good that we can meet and we can talk and uh, inspire each other so i think i will think about the uh, uh, next uh, conversation because i was a little bit nervous that i'm not going to be able to switch the languages uh, so uh, so quickly because i was really nervous about this conversation but i've done it before in italy italian where basically uh, the doctor would uh, demasi would 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 take a question, ask me, and then answer it in, a, in Italian. So again, I, I need to learn every language in the world, uh, which, which I think it's important for all of us to do, uh, but I would love to do that sometime also.
Okay. So thank you very much again and see you. Uh, I hope uh, to meet you again. Okay. I will look forward to it. We'll do it again soon. Okay. Thank Please you see. very All much. Right. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.